thank you very, very much for, for having me here. I'm, I'm very happy to be here today with you, and, and uh, I hope you have a great conference, you enjoy it, and it's uh, productive for you, and, and that you enjoy Warsaw if you're from outside Poland, or that you enjoy Poland if you're from, you know, are you Warsaw if you're from outside Warsaw, or enjoy Poland if you're from outside Poland. So uh, before I start and, and get to the substance of my talk today, uh, I would like to say that I had the opportunity to, to meet a little bit the startup community here in Poland, here in Warsaw, but also in Krakow, in some other places. And I must say, this is truly a remarkable grouping of people. I mean, you all have this shared, you know, intention to create something special and to create a global company. And I have no doubt that at some point you will manage to do that. So I cross my fingers for all of you and, you know, and, and this is really great what you're doing. Okay, so the organizers have asked me today that question, okay? Or they asked me to talk about this question. You know, what is leadership? And, and I take this question very seriously because the way, you know, how we define and how we, how we answer that question will have an impact on how we act and how we perceive leadership and leadership actions. So today I will, I will do something different than I usually do. I usually, you know, tell the stories and, and try to make it inspirational a little bit. But today I will be a little bit more theoretical, okay? So, but because I think it is very important how we understand leadership. So the first thing I want to show you is a little presentation, or a little movie that recently showed up on my Facebook wall. And some of you might have seen it. Okay, so look at this. It's very relevant. Have you seen that? Look at this. Okay, you, you can stop the stream. So have you seen that movie before? I mean, this is really amazing what this lady is doing, right? This is really amazing. And I think it's very relevant to leadership because most of us and all as we sit here think of leadership as not maybe alone, maybe with people, but to do something amazing, something extraordinary, to create a world that did not exist before. Right? So most of us, if I, if I say the word leadership, or we start to talk about leadership, you think, well, this is kind of an activity, you know, to get people together, motivate them somehow, and to make something great, something, something extraordinary, something different, okay? A little bit like this lady. How many of you think so, when you think about leadership? Can you raise your hand? Okay, almost everyone, somehow. It's a good activity, something creating something extraordinary. Okay, there are other notions of leadership that we all have and we all share. For example, one important notion of leadership is that in the essence of leadership, something very important for leadership is having charisma and being a good communicator and uh, being a good public speaker. Even at this conference, we have presentation later on about how to make a good pitch, right? So how many of you think that charisma and good public speaking skills are essential for leadership. How many of you think so? Okay, almost everyone. So the first thing I want to say is that this is not true. This is not true. And I think this is to think so about leadership and have this notion of leadership that it's an activity of creating something extraordinary and that charisma is very important, it's not only superficial, but actually also very dangerous. How many of you know that man? Does anyone know that man? Well, this is a man, a very famous at some point, you know, living in the 70s, 60s, and 70s. His name is Jimmy Jones. Jimmy Jones was an extremely charismatic person. Jimmy Jones was a person that had tremendous public speaking skills. Jimmy Jones was a person that was able to mobilize thousands of people and had thousands of followers. 
Jimmy Jones created a new world in some ways, including he set up and created his own town. The, town na the town's name was Jonestown. I'm an extraordinary man, great charisma, great public speaking skills, and a lot of followers. And Jimmy Jones, on the eve of December in 1978, with his charisma and public speaking skills, convinced thousands of people to commit a mass suicide. One of the biggest or the biggest mass dangerous. All these skills are important. All of this is important, but it's actually very dangerous if you think that this is the most important thing. And today what I'd like to do is to really reflect on that question and try to focus later on on one thing that maybe, maybe is truly the essence of leadership. And that maybe might be also important for you as you think about your endeavors, if you think about your company and whatever you want to do in life. Okay? So if we ask that question and we think, what is leadership? Then I'd like to do something together with you. Okay? I would like all of you to stand up right now. Can you stand up, please? Okay, very good. So thank you for doing this with me. Now, I would like also each of you to now to make a turn to your right. Okay, can you make a turn to your right? Okay, turn around to your right, turn around. Okay, very good, very good, good. Now, now turn around to your left. Okay, turn around to your left. Turn around to your left. Okay, very good. Okay, now sit down. Now, now that I want to pose now two questions. Two questions that are very critical for understanding leadership. First is the following. What is the source of my power? What is the source of my power that allows me to give you an order and you do and you do whatever I ask you like a bunch of puppets? What is, what is, what is a, my source of power that allows me to give you an order, to give you an instructions, and you basically do it? What do you think? Trust. trust. You say trust. Okay. Micro what? Microphone. A microphone. Yeah, a microphone is very important. I mean, if you go to the court, you see people wearing strange suits. And one of the reasons is to create a symbol of power and a symbol of authority. Very important. Okay. What else might be the source of my power to over you. I'm sorry? A place. So you think if somebody stands in front of you, you're going to do everything you asked. OK, so you think uh, you know, all presenters everywhere will have that power over you. You think so? Okay. What else you say? Knowledge. What do you mean by knowledge? Okay. But it's not so much about my knowledge. I could have knowledge about many, many other things. Maybe knowledge that may serve you somehow, right? Okay. What else do you think? What is the source of my power? I mean, you know, we think about leadership, we use the word leadership every day, we read in newspapers the word leadership, and we don't really know what it is so much, okay? Now, so leave that question aside, and now, let us consider that question. What did they do when asking you this question? Did I exercise leadership, or did I exercise authority or power? What do you think? When I was standing here and giving you an order and you were doing this, did I exercise leadership or did I exercise power or authority? What do you think? Authority. 
Why do you think it's your authority? Okay, so why do you think I didn't exercise leadership? How can you tell? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else? Who has a different opinion or a different answer to that question? Did they all exercise authority or did they exercise leadership? Or maybe I exercised two, both. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, we have an agreement. We have an agreement of some sort. Okay. So, having been in the space of this agreement, do you think that being in that space of, of this agreement, I exercise leadership or I exercise authority? You said leadership. Why do you think so? You think I was the leader, he, she th he thinks I was not the leader. I'm sorry? Okay. Okay, my request, my order, however you think so. Uh huh. Okay, so you think that. So you think that to exercise leadership is to do the same thing as the people that you work with? Not sure, maybe. Maybe, okay, we think so. So, what else? Do you, do you think I exercise leadership or authority? Yes. You don't work for me, and even though you don't work for me, you did what I wanted you to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, good. So, let's say this way. Yes. I don't know. There are instances in the history that people did. Well, but we there would not have done it. I'm sorry? We in this room would not have done that. We would have refused to do it. Okay. That's a very simple situation right now that we are in, right? But if you look at the history, you have a lot of instances of people killing other people on the request of one person. Without really thinking so much, right? So, so these are the types of, of, of kinds of critical questions that one should think. But essentially, you know, what I want you to uh, focus right now is that first of all, there is a special relationship between you and me. And to understand that this kind of special relationship, even if we don't see it and we are not aware of, binds us in any situation, almost any situation that we are in. Be it our people, be it other audience, you know, and us here. There's a special relationship, and understanding this special relationship is very important, okay? In some ways, what we have here is that we have an authority structure. There is an authority structure, and in that little authority structure, which is temporary, but it's built instantaneously, I'm an authority figure. I'm the person that you look up to for answers, for direction, for whatever it might be, and I'm an authority figure for you right now. And this kind of authority, authority structures we build every day, everywhere, in all our situation. When you talk to your, uh, you know, to your employees and, or, or to colleagues or friends that build with you your startup, there is an authority structure like that. And I'm an authority figure. And now, within this authority structure, there is a special relationship between me and between you. In some ways, what you do is that you give me power, because right now you're giving me a lot of power. You give me power in exchange for something. Right? Right now you're giving me a lot of power, and and an important element of that power is your attention. You know, when you think about leadership or authority, one of the most critical resources for authority and leadership is attention. 
attention. You know, think that now, right now, as we sit in this room, there are people around the world that are willing to burn themselves, put fire on themselves and burn to draw attention on other people on the problem that they are willing to die. Think of politicians that want to be on the front page of the newspaper to have attention of other people so that other people listen to what they think and to listen to what they say and it should be that one whatever it is. Attention is very important. You know, I recently read about a startup here in Poland and there was a little story. The, the people that were doing this said, you know, we, it was extremely important for us to get attention of Tim Cook from Apple. They went to Apple, nobody wanted to talk to them. They, you know, asked, sent an email, sent a letter, and nothing happened. So they went to the neighbor on Tim Cook, gave him a small piece of paper with a description of the project, so that this neighbor gives this piece of paper to Tim Cook. So he takes 10 seconds of his time, his attention, and learns something about their project. Right? I'm sorry? Yes. So, so you give me now a lot of power, and, but you're giving me this in exchange for something. And this something, you actually specify very clearly. For me, to maintain that power and to maintain your authority, it, for me, it is necessary to a large extent to play according to your music. Okay, let me demonstrate that for a while. Oh, I can take this chair. Okay, so how do you feel? What's your feeling? Boring. Boring. Okay, one person left. Withdraw my power and pay attention to me. If I stay like this for the next five minutes, two other people will leave. For 15 minutes, most people will leave. 
Maybe someone, you know, wanted to say something, whatever, okay? I know what your feelings are. Each of you have a different feeling. Somebody looked at their cell phone, you know, this is boring, you know, I'm going to look at the cell phone. But you experience something very important. You experience a little bit of frustration, a little bit of, oh my God, this is, what is guy, that guy's doing? You know, I'm going to leave in a second. You know, and that basically describes a lot the contract of the agreement and the relationship that we have. You are giving me power in exchange for giving me service, and you define that service. In that particular situation, that service, you define the following. You put me in a box like this and you say, you need to talk. I expect you as a presenter at this conference to talk to me. And to say something inspirational or something interesting, whatever, you define it. And I can maintain this power, I can maintain this power or my power as long as I meet your expectations. And so, and if my job today would be to optimize my authority, to optimize my, uh, my, my power, for me it would be important to understand what your expectations are and then try to create a perception that I meet them to the fullest extent. And this is exactly what politicians do. Politicians run polls, you know, see what the opinion pulse is, what people think about different things, and they try to create an impression that they are going to meet those expectations. This is how they're going to get elected, and this is how they get, uh, get power. And to be an authority figure at the end. Well, there is nothing bad in it, because authority, figure, uh, authority structures like this, that are built every time, everywhere, in all contexts that you create, are actually a very powerful way of coordinating human actions. I mean, thanks to such authority structures, we are able to organize conferences like this, we are able to create planes, and we, creating, we are able to create startups and grow them. That's a, that's a great invention. But also there's a constraint, especially a constraint on authority figure, because an authority figure to maintain that power with that, within authority structure has to fulfill the expectations. I'm authorized in exchange for giving service. Okay, and with this little exercise, I wanted to make it for you. So, in some ways, what you're doing is that you give me power and give me authority, but you put me in a small box. And my actions within this small box is, to a large extent, exercising my authority. Well, in our life, people, a lot of people try to put us in a small box. And this box becomes smaller and smaller until it gets wooden at the end of our life. And sometimes leadership, sometimes leadership means, or to exercise leadership means, is that we have to go beyond those expectations and go beyond those boxes and beyond those constraints that people are trying to put on us. Well, and if you try to, but if you try to do that, if you try to exercise leadership and to take an action beyond your authority, beyond those expectations, this is going to be very risky. I lost one person. She left. If I sat 10 minutes like this, everyone would leave, and the people from the conference would never invite me again. Right? So there is a lot of risk for me. People are going to you know, attack me somehow, whatever the actions they're going to take, but there is, it's risky. But sometimes when the expectations are wrong and when people are thinking and they, you know, what they expect is wrong, actually leadership means that you have to go beyond that and frustrate those expectations. And if you look at the leadership from this perspective, then you might understand that the essence, in some ways, the essence of leadership is not public speaking skills, it's not charisma, it's not creating something new, even though all of this is important. But the essence of leadership is this.
courage. Courage. You know, things that we don't talk so much when you think about leadership. But courage is the essence of leadership. You know, think about that man. Most people know him. It's Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was, was a person that created a movement for equal rights between black and white. Martin Luther King was the person that changed America and in some ways changed the world. Mobilized hundreds of thousands and millions of people in the United States and around the globe. And Martin Luther King was also a person that was known from his extraordinary public speaking skills. He was a person of great charisma and, and, you know, and, and great speeches. I mean, most of you probably have heard his speech, I have a dream. Have you heard that speech? Right? He said, I have a dream that all men are equal. And he stood in front of hundreds of people in Washington, D.C. in the 60s. And this speech is said to be one of the most important speeches in the history of modern mankind. So Martin Luther King is probably someone that we would name a leader, and it's not very easy for us to name somebody a leader today, especially our politicians. But this is one, exactly one person that we could say, yes, it was perhaps a leader. This was a leader. And he had the great public speaking skills. But consider this. If Martin Luther King hadn't had the courage to speak what he spoke, if he hadn't had the courage to say so, so say whatever he said, he wouldn't have said a word. You would have never learned, you would have never had, you know, listened to his speech if he hadn't had the courage to say those things. Things that at that time were very risky and very dangerous. He was beaten, sent to prison. So what is essence to, so of course his public speaking skills were an important tool for him to mobilize people, but the essence, the starting point of, for him to exercise leadership was his courage to stand for whatever he stood. And one important thing is also that Martin Luther King was a simple priest. He was not a president. He was not a prime minister. He was one of many. And he exercised leadership. And he took his action because of his courage. This is Rosa Parks. Actually, the whole movement started with her. You know, she sat down in the, in the bus in a place for white people where she was not authorized to sit. She was not authorized to sit in a place for white women, white people. But she sat and then she was sent to prison because she was not authorized to do. And she didn't say a word, she didn't have a speech, she didn't talk so much, but actually the whole movement started with her. It was her courage who made and created the whole movement. And she was an ordinary woman. She was not a president, she was not a prime minister, she was an ordinary woman, one of many. A woman with, ordinary woman with great courage. If you think about our leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, who also took risk, it was also his courage because when he was in South Africa as a lawyer and then in India as a lawyer, he started to talk about things that, were, that he was not authorized to do. He was beaten and sent to prison. And he was a lawyer, a, a, simple, a simple lawyer in some ways. Robert Kennedy once said, few men are willing to brave the disapproval of their fellows, the censure of their colleagues and the wrath of their society. Moral courage is a rarer commodity than bravery in a battle or a great intelligence. Yet it is the one essential, vital quality for those who seek to change the world. And then on the other extreme, you know, uh, Alex Ferguson, the manager of Manchester United, their football fans, yes. He said, most people who inherit a job 
will try to do what they think others expect of them, rather than what they themselves think is the right thing to do. Most people who inherit a job will try to do what they, what they think others expect of them, rather than what they themselves think is the right thing to do. The ability to resist this is the difference between being a manager and being a leader. So today, when I was asked to talk about, you know, answer the question, what is leadership? I want to focus your attention on this, on courage. That's the essence of leadership. That's the essence of leadership. And if you think about people from your community and start of community, you know, that's what made the difference. For example, Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba, of, of Alibaba, right? He talks a lot about failures. You know, how many failures he had, and despite failures, how much he achieved. That's a great story, and certainly, you know, a, a good example. But you see, failures have only people that have the courage to do things that are risky. If you don't have the courage to stand up and take risks, you will not fail. So actually, it's not the failure, but the courage that actually makes them do things. And if you think about, I don't know, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, there's different levels of courage because Martin Luther King was shot down and, you know, and Mahatma Gandhi was assassinated. So today we don't have that situation, right, in the startup community, nobody's shooting at us. Right? But there's a lot of places where courage is important. You know, to do things when we're not expected to do, or do things that other people think are stupid. To do things that are maybe risky. And even if you think about, I don't know, Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg. I mean, they, they, had, they had the courage to drop out from the university from Harvard. There were a lot of people around them that said, no, it's stupid. You go to the best university, you should stay there. You're going to ruin your career. Today, we don't think about this. We see the great companies that they've built. But actually, at that moment of time, they had to take a decision. Do I stay and study at Harvard? And everyone around me expects me to do it, starting from my parents and my colleagues and whoever it is. Or I take a risk and start to build. In many ways, courage, and the courage that they have, of course, there, is, there was kind of an idea, something that they pursued, and they laughed, and they, and they wanted to, to realize, but courage was very essential for them. So now, answering this question, I want to leave you with questions for you, because there will be situations when you, when you create your startup and you try to develop your startup, there will be situations where you will have to face a choice. Do I do what people expect me to do? Do I say no? You know, do I, you know, if you want to create a world, as I said, you know, we all think that, you know, leadership is about creating a new world and mobilizing people to do that. But sometimes to create a new world, you just have to be, have the courage to leave the old one. Sometimes you have to have the courage to destroy the old one, including your own world your personal world, right? So today I, I, want, you to, I want to leave you with, uh, with uh, four questions, you know. First is, where is the source of your courage? If you look about yourself, you know, where is the source of my courage? What is the source of my courage for you, individually? Second, do you live in a how and a why paradigm? You know what I mean by this is, there are two ways of living, I think. You know, the first is in a, why, a, a how paradigm. So here you have this world, you know, this box, this system, and you will live, whatever it is. Here is this world, and we look at this world, and we ask a question, how? How can I best do in this world? How can I, you know, best, you know, optimize in this world, within this world? That's how most people live. And then the question of why, where you look at this world that is, whatever the world is, a sector, a business, your personal world, you look at this and you ask the question, why? Why is that world so? And maybe is there some, something that, that I need to do to shift that world, which is going to be risky. 
In other ways, where you, you know, adjust this world, or you try to create it, shift it, change it. Okay, so what is the paradigm you live in? In a how paradigm or why paradigm? And do you adjust the world? Whatever the world is, as I said, the sector, your kind of product range, whatever. Or you create a new one. And then also a very important question for leadership, because courage has got to come, come from something. An important question, I think, is how do you want, what do you want to leave behind? Okay, what is the deepest sense of what you do? A prompt from making money and whatever it is. Right? What do you want to leave behind? Okay, so I'll leave you with, those, with these questions, and you know, and I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. Okay. So, yes. Yes. So in my case, it's very easy for me because I know where the source of my courage is. Okay. I I want to make Poland a good country. And looking at Poland not in separate, I think, you know, Poland is part of the world, so I want to make the world in some ways a better place. But for me, the closest is Poland, okay? And for me, it's something very important. And whenever I interact with this world and I do something, there's something, an overarching, overarching goal for me. And I draw courage from it. You know why? Because if you live in a world where you're only preoccupied with yourself, then you're preoccupied with yourself. You think about how it's gonna hurt, you know, what people are gonna talk, what they're gonna say, you know, and you, you're preoccupied with yourself. Well, if you have a goal that is bigger than you, that's the moment where you start thinking, you stop thinking so much about yourself only. Okay, and the best and the easiest example is as a mother, you know? Mother, as any person is, of course, you know, preoccupied with herself, but once she gets a daughter or a son, and the daughter or son is in danger, she forgets about herself and starts to protect, and she is willing to stand in front of that daughter or son and, and protect her from a bullet. Okay? So for me, it's this. But for each of you, it might be different. But if you think about people from startup communities, for, for example, Steve Jobs, you know, he lost, he lost his company, the company that he created. Well, there was a possibility for him to keep his job. That was very easy for him. I mean, for him, it was very easy. I mean, it was simply for him to say yes to whatever was suggested at that moment of time. But for him, it was not about his job, but about creating something that he felt was important. He said no, and he lost his job. But that, but that, but that, power, that, that courage that he had from this kind of bigger goal, I think, draw him later on to the successes in other places and then entering again uh, the apple. Okay? Yes. What else? Do you have any other questions? I'm oh, sorry? About the list? Okay, do you have any other questions? No? Okay, so if you don't have any questions, you can connect with me, okay? Send an email or uh, connect through social networks, whatever. Okay, so that's it. So thank you very much. I hope you, I hope you enjoy the conference. And, and I wish all of you to realize the goals that you have and, you know, and do great things. Okay, thank you.